And then people will open their mouth in the house, especially those that come in and stay with when they are a bit mature and have been wrongly fed in the brain. When they hear some things, they say, this one is not very normal. The normal things that are wrongly fed in the brain becomes abnormal. But the normal things that are rightly fed in the brain becomes normal. When my daughters go to school and they do their budgets and look at their budgets and they say, hmm, I'm not seeing a slash here. The next time you come back home, you will be like, who are carrying a hem here? I want to see a slash here. I don't see uh, sanitary tablets, sanitary pads here. Look there. Some of them say, that you will just go and buy them. I say, I want them in your budget. Write <laughs> them here, I want them. If they are much, I tell you this is too much. You need to shave two, three, four times in a time. That is, <laughs> that is parental. <laughs> I must tell them occasionally, hey, my daughter, carry me, I sit there. Carry me that thing over there. And when they do that, I tell them, yeah. If here is not right, then I know elsewhere is not right. <laughs> yes. Those of us who have never been parent, think of that parent. Dynamics of relationships. Genesis chapter 29, verse 1 to 35. Uh, we also have a test for chapter 30. Genesis. And because it's a very long reading, we will not read it, but we mention a few things as we go back. Genesis chapter 29, verse 1 to 35. Dynamics. The way people or things behave and react to different situations in life. The particular situations in life. The way they react and the way they behave. The way a parent reacts to their children and the way they behave. Some of these responses are so spontaneous. 
spontaneous and so dead. Some are spontaneous but constructive. I'm sorry, I won't be able to handle every little detail that I should be handling, but I want to try and handle a few of them a bit in that. Yeah, 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 
in the authority that is in the man, love has to be there. Love has to be there. Many here in the world, love has to be in the authority. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 to 33, the man becomes the head of a family. If the man cannot give headship in the family, that family is perished. Let me tell you, my sister, who are here, if you get married to a man who cannot give direction, that marriage is perished. If you don't ask the left to what's married, listen to him well. What is your opinion? What is your opinion in this? That is a weak man. That is. That's a weak man. He needs a lady who will who will who, who will not give an opinion. A man must be one who gives directions in the family. What about what will happen? Lift up your hands and wave in the air. You have an authority to direct your family. But this authority must be used with love. The ladies have also come up and some have come up and wow me when I'm black and when you're And especially if they are the highest, if they are the high honors in their family. The bread winners in their family, they will tell the men, what are you going to let them do? And then it will talk and let them do it. Talk about it.
Spiritual Security. You know, you is a pastor was attacked by daughter sometimes, but the wife was there on bed, she was told, sleep, put a match. What do you want? Forget money. You don't want to come to her now. And the wife is there in the bed. I'm in love. And the man fell down. I don't know how he went under the bed. And he felt, okay, I am the man. If I disappear from here, my family is clear. He moved out from under the bed, attacked the robbers, and they took off. The only thing a man must be respected. If you want to know a respected thing, is one whose husband is a good one. At your own time, read uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 31. This must be done with self sacrifice. You know, parents must sacrifice. When there are gun shops in town, and then you discover that suddenly your son or your daughter is sick and needs medical attention in the night. You say, ah, soon you come in the end. That is the point you know that a man is a man. After the Lord told Dr. Okechanda, I said, if I perish, I perish. And you will see them walk to the hospital with their children. Done with self-sacrifice. You must be ready to die for your family. The Bible says, and Christ offered himself because of love for the church, even to the point of death. And he's the one who's compared to a man. In marriage, that with a lot of self sacrifice. But also continues there and says, Christ did this that he would present the church to himself. What is this to you? A man must do whatever he can do to make his wife more attractive to him. Did somebody get me that? Ladies, when you get married to somebody that you love, if that person tells you, I, I love short hair, oh, of course my wife now has short hair, not because I, I asked for, but if, if, if your husband tells you, I love short hair, go in for that. <laughs> if you love long hair and your, your husband loves short hair, if you look in long hair, I thought I would need a family, I might have to live with a book. That was never my choice. <laughs> you are there in the house, but the choice is out. <laughs> that you may present your wife to yourself. Christ did this that you present the church to himself as a pure one. That he present the church to himself, a church that pleases him. The man must do things so that he presents his wife as a wife of value himself. Villain of your tank. I can tell you, I need a baby in my tank. I can hear it is the way I want. You happen to know this, but allow me to bring this to your uh, notice. When people get married for the first time, one looks east, another one looks west. So I am in a Takama in Saudi Arabia, no one in a Takama in South Africa. But give them four, five years, let my wife come here and you stand here, and you will think I am her brother and she is my sister. To present herself to 
and a man go because of how you look. If you present yourself modestly, be sure you will be married by a modest man. That's the reality. If you present yourself exaggeratedly, you will be married by an exaggerated man. <laughs> then you will discover that your outside appearance, so due to a wrong man, that the family begins getting it, begin, begins getting the head one. Don't know where to get it. Because she looked, he looked at you the way you appear. That may cement a relationship 
get to expose the mountains. And so people who are relating towards marriage, like some of you here, who are very seriously relating towards marriage, show your lights at this light of heaven. Respect must be given to those who make the sounds. I looked at the life of uh, Samson. Samson failed, though he was such a strong man, he failed because he lacked respect for parents. If you never know. There are, there are things that the parents told him, don't do this, but he went ahead and he did the opposite. And they lamentably. Respect must get to parents. Even as you get towards marriage, parents must be respected. The patients that the six was one. Children are to respect their parents. Whether you and the parents, or your parents and you, whether you and your parents, for you and your children, that respect must be there. It must be there. Very many parents who do not respect their own parents, when they finally discover that their children don't respect them, they may never know it all began with them. When I, when we got our first book, my love towards my parents because it was a battle. And I said, hey, tell me in your first form. I'm the one who opened the womb. If this is what we are going through in the house, you mean my parents went through this because of me? I felt wounded over the ills that I had done to my parents. It pained me so much. Samson refused to get good instructions. And so things did not work well. Uh, and I always keep raising godly children because I want to be clear with it. And we don't want to take hand. But that's something on, on sexual purity or purity in a family. First Thessalonians 4, verse 1 to 8, Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. Impure relationships lead to us. Like that. The way you walked out and conceived 
and give back to me. That is the way I am walking out. That is my plan. So I can't resist it. It is you who put that blood in me. So just allow me to walk out. When he's to disciplined, he says to the man that this man must be disciplined. This is not my father. Very unstable marriages. Mary feared, I mean Joseph feared that. He feared having a child outside wedlock. Some of us have had children, of course, uh, we'll, we'll share about that uh, much later. Some of us have had children. If you don't put things right with a child that you have outside marriage, you're preparing for failing marriage. Maybe tomorrow we'll be having something on or related to that. He also did want an embarrassing separation. That is purity. Last time we shut down there. That today when you separate in relationships, you make sure it is in the world. It is in the WhatsApp. Everybody in the university knows that Carlo, who was relating with Castro, they have separated. And I write all sorry about Carlo, which are not even true. The Bible says, Joseph sought to put her out privately. For the The impure ways in which we handle our separations make our marriages dirty. You see, when you separate peacefully, without bringing commotion, some people will not even know that you are related. But try and separate in commotion. Then when you get married to another one who is also here, who also hears the commotion, one day when you travel at a company, sit at the end of the corner and the arrow and the mirror of the ghost in it. Some of us will be told such things because we decided to post Carlo here. We decided to post Castro here. That is impurity in marriage. Don't think it is only sex. It even includes the way we separate. Let us separate in very few ways that nobody hears. Amen. Do not engage in sex outside marriage. Sex in marriage is sweet. Sex in marriage is enjoyable. Sex in marriage is the best. What is it? Of course, I tell my children when I talk to them about sex. I tell them, my children, leave sex for your mother and I who are married. <laughs> I tell them. I tell them, wait for the day you are married. Then you engage in sex with your husband. You will teach them how to do it. I have told them, I will teach you how to do it. Parenting in Leo and Kogiri Magokama Highway. Sex is not a bad thing. God does not give bad things. God gives good things. What is this view? Sex outside marriage defies. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18. Sex outside marriage defies. And so when it defies, you walk away defiant. I remember I shared this last time I was here. A lady went for operation. And you see, when people go for operations after those uh, things I detected in them, when they come back, they speak certain realities about their life that they did not know. They're speaking. So the man, the lady began speaking about Ambangwakan and Aukehapu, the way the man does. And the husband is there. Now, the Hidawa in Chagana, and I'm here about another man in Pangwakan. Imagine you've taken the wife to the hospital, she's been operated on, and you think she's now recovered. You say, I finally, you want to talk her out of the unconscious 
interesting. I can see now she's beginning to talk. Then you begin hearing her talk about another man. That's better than you do. That happened in the Yugis. I think it comes from theater and now. Uh, sex outside what is defined. Your mother will give you a lot of sick, especially those who dream and love. They, they sleep in the night and in the end of the night, they dream of their father who are coming next to their husband and talk right of the father who are coming and say, Is he dead? And call the sleepy by day while the husband is here or the wife is here. Sex outside marriage defines. And if it has never defined you, wait for the day the poison in you about that, that has come from that sex is revealed. Then you will know that you're defined. And I will tell you one of the ways you will know that you're defined. You. Get this one day you will remember. When in bed with your husband or wife, then in the very act, you begin comparing your husband or wife with another one. At that point, you will know that that thing defied you. If it will happen to you, the land it tells that that thing defied you. You see, we as pastors, we as ministers, occasionally, what we hear, the cases we handle, are so painful, you never know where to put them. Sex outside marriage defines. So how then do we survive that we may come out of this? One, make covenants with your eyes. Job chapter 31, verse 1. Make a covenant with your eyes. Tells me, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Never to look at a naked woman last to me. Today they are naked women all over, and even here in this institution. And when they walk before you naked, they want you to see the way they are. Don't be saying, even if they walk before me naked, I will not look at them last week. Of course, I will see them, but you will not look at them last week. If you've been walking that walk where your nakedness is exposed, then you know it. As a man, I can look at you last time. But I'm saying, I want to repeat, nakedness for this world is meant to three places only. One, medical purposes. That is where a male man encourages to tell your husband, stand there, out there, as I have your wife here. Then you will hear him telling your, telling your wife, undress. Medical purposes. Two, infant. And three, marriage. Those are the only three places where nudity is allowed. Not even in the disco. The Bible says that the two were naked and they were not ashamed of one another. If you're not ashamed of nakedness, there is a problem. <laughs> of course, there's a reality. If you're not ashamed of nakedness, there's a problem with you. Ask yourself, if God says that the two of them were naked and were not ashamed, it means nakedness will be bringing shame. And those people will say, uh -uh, don't invite that man here again. Of course, it's no problem. <laughs> two. Be surrounded by Positive believers, people who are positive in their minds. Three, treat the old as your parents, any elderly person treat as your parent, and any young person as siblings. Then you will be saved. Keep safe distance. Flee such groups that kill. Seek that you may please God. Very quickly, raising godly children. I said I wouldn't I would not be able to handle everything that was expected of me. Raising godly children. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. The Bible teaches, beloved friends, that we must raise godly children. 
Malachi chapter 2 around verse 16 there about says, Yes, men the two why that they may raise up spiritual offsprings. How will we raise godly children? One, teach them the way of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 6. The Bible says, and they will not depart from it. I want to ask you, the moment you give them a dose of God, they will know how to treat you. When our daughter was, uh, I can't recall exactly how old, that would have been 2007, we had gone with her for a mission. It's a very far place. The first night we arrived late, we were given food, we slept. And because she was tired, the following day after taking breakfast, she went to sleep. She woke up when people were taking midday, mid mid morning tea. She took that with us. We didn't have a session after mid morning tea. Went in for lunch. Then she stood at the table. You see, Daddy, but what do you put a half a cooler? Is this what you call a ministry? Did you come here to preach or to eat? You ate in the night, you did nothing. You drank tea in the morning, you did nothing. You drank tea at midday, at, 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 at mid morning, you did nothing. And now again, you want to eat that. Is this what brought you all the way from Moyukis? Bring up a child in a way, and they will not depart from it. They will even depart as you one day. When you begin life before somebody, you are going to tell you, tell me, what is this piece of grass that you say walk up and walk up and this is Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7 says, Let them learn this one. Just a minute. We just go up and finish. Raising up godly children must be a personal initiative. Train children up in godliness and in labor. Wafunze, kwa mambo ya mungu, na pia kwa kufanya, kwa kutenda. Do I carry you? Okay, come and carry you.
Proverbs chapter 12 verse 7 and Psalm 128 verse 1 to 6. When you serve God, God says your children will be blessed, they will be raised, they will be raised in a godly manner. I have known a family as I speak now whose children are never bright. They go to school and they never perform well. But surprisingly, at the end of their courses, they go to the university. Or even if they don't go to the university, they do some wonderful courses and have a lot of wealth in their family. The parents have been serving God so well. Let them practice and do the job of being. Luke chapter 2, verse 51. When Jesus had been brought back into the family, he did what the father did. He did captain. Come away with mechanic. I went to another chinia magani. I jump to one copy another chinia magani. I think you're passing a particular book of Bugani. What is this thing? See, if you bring food and you eat and let the child learn where the resources in their family come from. That's why I go with my children for ministry. On several occasions, we have spent with them in the wilderness when the car has got to sell. The same car, even like a kid, the Lalisha did it, the Lala provision. Occasionally, when it brings its head towards the ministry, I park it by the road, I leave it there, I go for ministry, and I come back, it is so late in the evening, we roll the back, the, 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 the seats, and we sleep in there. I tell them, this is what it is. When my daughter was uh, four weeks, three weeks, or four, three weeks old, we spent the latrine five days with her in a ministry. Let them do what you do. Listen to God's voice. Train them in God's voice. When I used to speak, that is the fatigue. Samson was trained in God's voice. Samson was trained according to the Lord. The parents asked, what shall we do about this child? Ask God. Let me find it in, in, in Genesis chapter 13. They asked God, when these words come true, tell us how to bring up this child. Let me tell you some things about children as I get to through that part. The way children come dictates who they are. Did somebody get me that? If you don't follow that way, well, then you don't get the right out of a child. Look at this. Samson came out of a locked womb to deliver the children of Israel from the Philistines. Samuel came out of a locked womb to be a prophet in the land of Israel, a rescuing prophet in the land of Israel. John the Baptist came out of a locked womb to be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. When children come, when you become expectant, when you discover that things are not working, then there, the enemy is fighting that child left and right because of the value in that child. Praise be to the Lord. Shetani and the Lord don't have value for Mule Dani, we don't want to be cool and not have money. This one is a key. Medic told us from the very first day. Stop it, terminate this one. You don't have a key. You never share with anyone. You don't have a key to it. So anyway, I know that when things come the other way, there is some value in there. Praise be to the Lord. When we discover that you cannot bear children, two, three, four, five years in a Peter, and the father knows that the Lord suddenly opens the womb, there is a seed, a special seed in that child. Don't treat them like any other child. They are children of a great destiny. When children are born in a family where any other one is born dies, there is a point one is born and he leaves. There is a special reason for which he is living. Praise be to the Lord. Don't just look at them and say, ah, this one is natural. Dying of children in our family is natural. It is not natural. If it is natural, the living one should have died. But because it is not natural, there is a special seed in that one. Bring that before the Lord. Praise be to the Lord. Uh, Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. 
I and the children the Lord has given unto me, we shall be for a sign and a wonder. Finally, raising up for the children, the book of Job chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. Pray for your children. Praise me to the Lord. The Bible says that every time after the feast, Job would pray for his children and offer sacrifices and say, probably my children might have abused God. Let me see how to cleanse them. That is what uh, Pharaoh told Moses. You can go, but leave us with your children. Do not leave them. Raising up for your children, go with them to that fellowship. Where you go. Sure. I love that.